Hey, Math 30-2s. We're going to look at uh, permutations with restrictions today. In many problems, restrictions are placed on the order in which objects are arranged. In this type of situation, deal with the restriction first. Many of the problems in this lesson can be solved using the fundamental counting principle. So either way is fine. As example one mentions, answer the following first with the fundamental counting principle and second using factorials. So in how many ways can all the letters of the word oranges be arranged if there are no further restrictions? So we've got two, four, six, seven letters. Any of the seven letters can come in the first spot. I've now used one. I've got six left. I've now used two. I've got five left and so on. And because it's all the same arrangement, we're going to multiply. That's the fundamental counting principle. If I want to look at this in terms of permutations, we know that 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is the same as 7 factorial. That's 5,040 different arrangements. <coughs> Part B says if the first letter must be an N. So we still have 7 spots, but the first letter must be N. There's only one way that N can fit there. And then we've got six letters to choose from, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. So there's our fundamental counting principle method. One times six, five, four, three, two, one. If I want to do factorial notation, there's still only one way to put an N there, and then it's times six factorial. So that's 720 possible arrangements. Example two. Three girls and four boys are to be arranged in a row for a photograph. How many ways can this be done if there are no restrictions as to where each person stands? Well, there are seven people, three girls, four boys. So there are seven factorial ways this can be done. Part B says the photographer decides that he could take a better photograph if no two people of the same gender can sit together. Show one arrangement of this. All right, one arrangement. So no two people in the same gender can sit together. So we'll put boy one here, boy two there, boy three, and boy four. Girl one, girl two, and girl three. There is one arrangement. Not the only arrangement, obviously. Part B says determine the total number of arrangements the photographer could make. The same gender cannot sit together. So if you look at the boys, <coughs> they can sit, any of the four boys can sit in that spot, and any of the three boys are left, and I've got two boys left and one. If we look at the girls, any of the three girls can sit in that spot, and any two there, and any one there, and it's all the same arrangement, and so we're going to multiply these all together. All right. So we could say 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 for the boys, 4 factorial, and... 3 times 2 times 1 for the girls, that's 3 factorial. We still multiply that together. So whether you want to use a fundamental accounting principle, like on top, or factorial notation, we're going to get the same idea. That's 24 for the boys, and multiply that by 6 for the girls, and we get a total of 24 times 6, 144 ways. Example three, <clears throat> six actors and eight actresses are available for a play. Four male roles and three female roles. All right. So we have six actors for four roles. We have eight actresses for three roles. How many different cast lists are possible? Well, if I use my permutation notation, all right, I've got six actors. Permutation order is important because there's four different rules, so I need to choose four rules for those six actors. And for the females, I've got eight actresses, and there are three rules, and they're all different, so order is important. And because it's the same ca cast list, we're going to multiply this together. So six permute four multiplied by eight permute three, 120,000. 960. All right. Example four, 
<clears throat> Andrew was asked to determine the number of arrangements of the letters of the word brains in which the vowels are together. His reasoning is shown below. Since the vowels must be kept together, he's going to treat A and I as one element. All right. This means that he now has five elements instead of six. So his five elements are the group of AI, the B, the R, the N, the S. So there's five elements. And he says those can be arranged in five factorial ways. All right. That makes sense. All right. Is Andrew correct in saying that A and I should be combined as one element? Yes, he is correct. His final answer is not correct. Explain what's missing. Well, he's done a lot of good stuff here, and I agree with everything Andrew's done. The only thing he's missing is the A and the I, as a group, could be ordered as well. It could be AI, or it could be IA. Right? So either of those can happen. So the group of AI and the other four make it five factorial. I agree with that. And then the group AI by itself can be ordered two factorial ways. There are two elements inside that group, so five factorial times two factorial would be the correct answer. So 120 times two, or 240 possible ways would be the best answer. Example five then, find the number of permutations of the letters of the word kitchen. If the letters K, C, N must be together, and they have to be in that order. K, C, N must be together and in that order. So there's the group of K, C, N. Then I've got an I, a T, an H, and an E left. So the group of K, C, N is one element. There's a second, third, fourth, fifth. So again, we've got five elements to arrange. We're going to use all five of those elements. That's five factorial ways. And unlike the question above, KCN can only be arranged in one in one order. It has to be KCN. It has to be in that order. So there's only one way to do that. So we multiplied by one. So five factorial times one is just five factorial. Let's add 120. Five factorial is 120. Part B. <clears throat> Part B says. The letters K, C, and N must be together, but not necessarily in that order. So now we've got our K, C, N, and everything else is the same, I, T, H, and E. So we still have five objects to arrange, one, two, three, four, five. So that's still five factorial. But now inside this group of K, C, N, there are three objects, and they can be arranged three factorial ways. All right? K, C, N, K, N, C, C, K, N, C, K, C, C, and k and so on. So 5 factorial times 3 factorial, well that's 120 times 6 or 720 arrangements. Example 6. Frank, George, Hannah, Iris, Jacob and Kim have playoff tickets for a hockey game in adjacent seats A3 through A8. How many different ways could they sit together in seats A3 through A8? Well there are 6 of them and there's no restrictions, so that'd be six factorial ways, or 720 different ways they could seat themselves from A3 to A8. Part B says, <coughs> George and Hannah are dating. How many different arrangements are there in A where they'd be sitting together? Well, so now I've got George and Hannah have to sit together, but they can sit anywhere. So that leaves Frank and Iris and Jacob and Kim as other elements in this arrangement. So George and Hannah are one element now. They have to be together. Two, three, four, five. So again, we've got five elements to arrange. That's five factorial ways. And in this arrangement of George and Hannah, there's two of them. That can be arranged two factorial ways. So you must multiply that by two factorial now. So 5 factorial times 2 factorial, 120 times 2, or 240 possibilities where George and Hannah are sitting together because they're dating. Ooh, just for the game, George and Hannah have a disagreement. They decide they should not sit together. They now need a peacekeeper between them. How many different arrangements are there where they're going to be sitting apart? Well, one way to look at this is if we have 
Frank, Isabel, sorry, Iris, Jacob, and Kim. Those are the four people that can sit anywhere. So they can be arranged four factorial ways. But in between them, we have to have George and Hannah. So in those black spaces, George and Hannah have to fit. So if I look at that, George could go here and Hannah there, or vice versa. George could go here and Hannah there, or vice versa. So what we do is we've got five spaces that those two could fit. Order's important, and there's only two of them. So four factorial times five permutations of two. This is one method to do it. So four factorial is 24 multiplied by five permutations of two. And five permutations of two is 20. So 24 times 20 is 480. So there are 480 arrangements where George and Hannah are not sitting beside each other. So that's one method to do it. Here's another method. If you look up here, this is the total number of possible arrangements. No restrictions, 720. In part B, we said, here's all the arrangements where they are sitting together. They are sitting together. So if 720 is the total possible arrangements and 240 is where they're sitting together, then where they're sitting apart must be 720, subtract that 240. That also gives us 480. So if you like that method better, great. You can do it. Find all the possible arrangements and subtract the opposite of what they're asking in part C. Okay. Try all the questions 1 to 13. We'll talk about those in class.